Hi guys, um, so today we are just going to go how we go about sort of putting together our P1 website that's either environmentally based or social, um, socially based. Um, so there's a handful of elements that we're going to be introducing you to um, and you've probably heard, uh, heard of these before, but um, what they're meant to do is um, become almost like your thumbnails when you're doing a layout and um, so there's quite a few of them that we use in web design and some um, some organizations um, you know we've well we've worked on websites that are 200 plus pages in which case you really have to have a, a tight tight wireframe and uh, a tight sitemap so those are two of the things um, that we're going to look at today. We're going to watch a short video by a nice Australian fellow who will go over the real, real basics of wireframing and site mapping. So the two different things are uh, a site map really um, is for you and the client to look at and to understand what are all the pages, wh what are all the links, wh where do all the buttons take you. Uh, it's basically getting under the hood of, of a website and understanding how many pages you're going to have. So in this first one, uh, in this first project, we don't have to worry too much because we're only going to have a couple secondary pages. Um, so if we just have a, a quick look at um, our brief, um, we know that, for instance, we only have to have two secondary pages. So in this case, a sitemap uh, isn't super uh, necessary other than um, it starts getting us thinking of, about how they work, um, what they're for. So the second thing we're going to be looking at, um, so in here you can see our list of deliverables. Let's just touch base on this again. You're going to select your subject, you're going to create, um, you're going to find the content for it, uh, the story, the article. Uh, you may be piecing it together from different um, articles. You're going to figure out how long it's going to be. So this first website, again, I uh, say that um, it can be a one-page scrolling site. People are completely used to scrolling and it's a very normal way to present uh, large um, chunks of information. But the key to it, as I mentioned in the last video, is to break it up into really palatable, ch palatable chunks and um, have a reason for having section breaks, that type of thing. So um, in this first project, we're looking at a, um, some of your deliverables are a, a sitemap. A wireframe of the three pages, um, style sheets, and um, then a mock-up. And I uh, am not too concerned about how you create the mock-up. Uh, if you're familiar with XD, you can do it in that, um, which is kind of industry. Um, that's what the industry uses. However, uh, this is not a course where I'm going to be teaching you XD because I don't know it well enough because I don't use it. I use uh, Sketch. Um, so you will learn it down the line for the for this particular project um, if you want to use Illustrator or you want to use InDesign you can absolutely use those and I'll show you exact, exactly what that kind of looks like so the sitemap is to understand what um, how many pages you're gonna have how all of the links work what's happening with it and you'll see more about that um, on the video we're gonna watch here in a minute um, but I just wanted to go over um, once you actually once you have your story and you have a, a, an understanding of how long the text is and we sort of went over what's sort of appropriate not appropriate um, that's when I'll start just kind of laying it out a little bit in Illustrator or sketch or XD um, I tend to start with uh, actually doing it just on paper so I can er erase and understand um, what I'm doing really quickly but um, I thought I would show you an example um, of a really basic um, wireframe so this is um, one from one of our students hang on for one sec I'm just gonna bring it up
So this is for uh, a project that was done a little while ago, but it really, um, in a really simple way, it can, uh, it'll kind of show you um, what we're talking about. So when you're putting together um, a wireframe, what I'm basically trying to figure out is um, where are my elements going? Um, how many elements are there? How much text there is? Images, what are those images? So this was um, a student um, mock-up for a jewelry company. So you can sort of see in Sarah's wireframe, she sort of put where the logo is, um, search buttons, um, I don't know what these are up here, but I'm going to assume that they are something. Uh, and then you can sort of see that she actually has two headlines, so headline one. And then when you're doing indications of text, you use lines just like we use um, in doing mock-ups for print publications. Uh, and then you'll see headline two, and more lines, and these boxes would indicate some sort of action, so probably a button. And you can also see here the three dots represent um, this being a slider. So these dots over here would represent this being an arrow and clicking through. So then um, that's all just above the fold. So if we think about some of the terminology that we're going to be talking about this semester, um, above the fold basically means when you're on a um, when you're on a laptop or when you're on a, a desktop um, computer above the fold is simply means what's above what the bottom of your browser is so this is everything you see right now is sort of above the fold anything beneath here we'll, we'll call beneath the fold um, then when we're talking about um, headlines and text um, some of the things that we have to get used to is changing our vernacular a little bit. Um, so instead of just going, um, saying heads, subheads, um, body copy, that sort of thing, um, in web design, we just break it down and we say H1, H2, H3, H4, um, body copy or, um, text. Um, so those change. So instead of going headlines, subheads, all that, where we go H1, H2, H3, H4. In Squarespace, um, it's really easy to keep track of those. You only have a certain amount of options. So typically on a website, you may only have four or five different um, type styles. So you have to understand how you're going to be using them, that sort of thing. So if we go to um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that a little bit later. But the other thing that you want to do when you're working on your wireframes is when you have images, um, I typically use boxes with crosses through them just to indicate um, that those are, are photographs. Um, so you can sort of see this is what Sarah has done with her. So she has obviously uh, a gallery here that um, is, uh, can click through and it obviously shuffles to the left. Um, and then as she goes down, um, she's figuring out um, calls to actions, um, that sort of thing. So that this is um, pretty much what a really basic wireframe um, looks like. Uh, this is not a, a really complicated one, but what it enables you to do is you can open up um, your text and, and everything that you have and move it to the side and then start figuring out how, uh, how much text what's going to be on your landing page, um, you know, how many sections can you have, how much text can you have before um, you break it up. So um, that's another thing. I mean, this is very much, um, this is very much um, a site that is selling things. But if you're putting text in here, um, you know, how far, uh, how far can you run text without breaking up? So I would say you do not want, you basically don't want to be uh, running text right through one full screen and then continue it down without breaking it up with something. Um, so this is basically a, a simple wireframe. And then um, you can sort of see, um, this is where Sarah ended up. So this is her, uh, she did this mock-up in Illustrator. So she took what she did, um, basically took the wireframes, she changed a few things and that will happen and she basically did her layout in Illustrator 
And whether you do that in InDesign or XD is up to you, but everything you create here will then be transferred um, into Squarespace. So basically, there, there's her, uh, there's all her assets. Um, that's another, that's another term that is um, you'll have to get used to, is um, when you create a website, um, everything that you put on the website. So things like. Um, charts or maps or photographs all have to be set up to go um, into in, into um, Squarespace and we call those things assets so the assets have to be generated from somewhere so um, a lot of times um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll do my layout and it, if you were to do it in XD you can generate the assets from your layout so it will it will clip the pictures and set it up so that um, the developer knows that where all the images go and it create a, a folder of assets. Um, so this is kind of a, a really lo-fi way to do it, but that's okay. It's really about understanding the process at this point. Um, so you can see Sarah has, has done her layout. Um, uh, I'm not sure if she actually did uh, a site map for this one, but again, we're going to watch a, a video in a minute. So beyond that, uh, what we would call this is, um, this is more of a mock-up. So she's basically setting everything up um, the way she wants it, and then she'll transfer that um, into Squarespace or uh, however um, she's building this website. Um, then the last thing that you, once you have this and you kind of have your layout down pat, the next thing you want to kind of understand is style sheets. And style sheets are simply a way for you and for the programmers uh, to understand what are all the elements that are going to be used on the website. So uh, a design tile or um, a site um, style board is basically um, all the elements you're going to need on your website. So you can sort of see on um, this one, we go in a little bit closer. Um, it recognizes and uh, you list all the type you use, so your H1s, H2, H3, H4, um, body copy, pull quotes, that sort of thing. Um, so that's all listed on there. The colors you're using on your website is listed on there. If you're using icons, you show your icons. Um, I do it with photography too. This is a really simple one. Um, colors is, is really interesting because um, this is a really simple one. But, but um, what you need to know in website design is that when you're using colors, there's going to be hover states, um, active states, and things like that. So you can see on here we have static, hover, um, button states, download buttons. So you, in, to, in real website design, you would be creating a lot of these things, or um, sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. Um, but you see all the forms are listed here. Um, that is a is a typical way to sort of uh, do a a, um, a a site design style or tile. We call them design styles. Some people call them site design styles or style tiles. Um, but really, what they are is everything that you're going to have on your website. It's the design system that you're going to use. So this this one basically is showing us what the logo looks like. Um, there's a couple icons that they'll use as a submark, um, secondary logos, um, color schemes that are, are um, set up for um, hex and, and RGB is listed on there. Um, here's our, uh, this is a really basic one, so they just have sort of um, headings, um, sort of uh, script headings and body copy on there. Um, but uh, as well on this one, which is why I'm showing this, um, they also have things like textures and photographs. So a lot I like to have those on um, on my site styles just so the, the programmers understand um, what the site is going to look like. Then once you have all of these things put together, it's basically going to inform what your website is going to look like. So by the time you have your um, by the time you have your wireframe, your site map, 
um, your mock-up and your style sheets, you basically are going to know what the site is going to look like. So before we watch um, the video by the nice Australian guy um, on doing site maps and wireframes, um, I just wanted to go over a little bit of terminology so um, that you're going to hear. So um, I'm just going to open up this um, legal site that we did a, a couple years ago and now has been butchered. Um, so uh, sometimes you're going to hear uh, the terms header. So the header really just um, refers to the um, the area sort of uh, up along the top. Um, so it's the top part of your website that doesn't change as you go to different pages. Uh, it typically has the navigation bar, um, logo, um, sometimes social media, things like that. Um, you'll hear the terms uh, sticky header. So you see, as I scroll here on this site, um, this has a it has a sticky header. So it kind of uh, it doesn't disappear as you scroll through the website. Um, the you'll hear navigation. So this area up in here is the main navigation. Uh, sometimes you'll hear the term uh, drop down. Uh, so this is a drop down menu that basically uh, comes down to sort of different. For every different category it will come up. Um, you'll hear the term uh, hamburger so when um, sometimes you'll see a, a series of very small lines um, when you get to a certain size so when we break this website down a little bit and um, bring it in you can see the hamburger comes in at a certain point so you see it's not there not there not there then we get to here and there it is so the hamburger just refers to the basically it's there as a for the mobile menu um, so it basically has all the same categories and um, they're all basically click clickable um, so if we just um, go back um, and then this um, so this site also has um, also has a uh, click through so um, so you'll see that on different sites as well um, so some of the other things you'll hear about um, um, breadcrumbs uh, people don't use them very much anymore but they're basically when you see a list of where you are on the site um, it's to, to tell you how to get back but nobody really uses those anymore um, we talked about drop down hamburgers um, um, sidebars are the same uh, as any other um, sidebars in, in print. Um, footer. Footer just refers to this very bottom section. Um, you determine what's going to go into a, a footer so you can sort of see here we've left sort of latest news. Um, there's a site map um, and then the two ad addresses of the offices. Um, so that is your footer. Um, uh, let's see, what, what else? Um, you'll hear a lot of things uh, like, uh, oh, we'll talk about responsive website design. So we just kind of looked at that a little bit. Um, you know, the reality is that most websites are seen through um, phones and, and tablets and other things. So um, responsive really means how the site um, how this site looks on a phone so you can sort of see there's breaking points where um, at a certain width it will change the visual so you see now it's basically set up for a phone so and it's much different so that's one of the things that that you have to be um, really aware of is is how your text how your images are all going to sort of um, collapse down so you can sort of see here if we scroll down you'll see that most of the text um, is sort of set up in one column you can do two columns but again what you have to be aware of is when um, when this collapses down to mobile um, you have to decide what is going to line up first so it basically is stacking all the information right so um, uh, something like Squarespace does that for you but one of the things you want to be really aware of is uh, checking what it looks like as you're building it 
Um, some other uh, terms you'll hear is like um, plugins. So those are sometimes third-party code that goes into a website that, that adds um, functionality. Um, the back end of a website is uh, the hidden part from a viewer. Um, Mock-up prototype, so we've touched on those. A hero image is just um, when you're on a website, you will get these sort of big images at the top. Um, landing page, um, this is, uh, like I mentioned before, this is a, basically called a slider. So this is something that um, um, is typically at the top of, of a page. Um, um, so there's lots of things like that. We'll go over lots of other things like Google Analytics and SEO, like search engine optimization. Um, that basically refers to engines understanding the information on your site and ranking it higher than um, your competitors and having meta tags and things like that. So um, yeah, lots lots of terminology. You'll get used to it, um, but um, a lot of that will be taken care of in Squarespace. Um, yeah, so let's watch the video with the nice Australian man.